Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. Temperature watches. It's been a while since we've actually looked at some of these. We'd had a rash of them at the beginning of the pandemic last year, 2020, uh, and then they kind of subsided. Well, here's another one coming back. By the way, we do have a playlist at smartwatchticks.com. Just tap the playlist button. You can see all the different watches we've reviewed that have temperature thermometers built into them. But this is a new one and figured we would bring it in and give it a look. Okay, the bands are separate. Here they are, white one this time. And the little module is right here. Before we go much further, let me just tell you a bit about it. It's a Bakey GTR-H. Uh, Real-time body ambient temperature detection, immunity heart rate, blood pressure monitor, so forth. Uh, so it's basically a uh, health band as opposed to a fitness one. It's going to be something you can use for real-time temperature uh, detection and so forth. It uses the Wear Fit 2.0 app. We've reviewed that a lot. Body temperature, ambient temperature, both of those, and immunity monitor support. In addition, heart rate, blood pressure, and blood oxygen. All the key things in this COVID world that we'd be interested in uh, recording. Again, a, a, a heads up to be uh, careful that you check the parameters of all of these if you get this one to make sure that they're accurate on your body. Everybody's body is different, different skin uh, color, different thickness, different hairs on spots and whatever on your arms. So uh, I can't attest to the accuracy, only to the fact that it records this information from your body and it's up to you to verify it. More functions on this thing as well are in here. You got remote cameras and stuff. Uh, 1.8 inch IPS 240 by 240 screen with a 200 milliamp hour battery. They're talking standby time about 14 days, 7 days, 1 week of use, 2 hours to charge it with the magnetic charging cable, which we're going to show you right now. Hiding in here in this little cover is a 2 pin connector, which will attach right there once we take it out of its little wrapping guess we could go ahead and do that nice that they wrap it all up pretty for us oh but it's magnetic look there's no buttons on it at all it's got a cover over all of the different sensors here i'll take that thing off too oh it's going to be obstinate all right, I'll get that later when I put the band on. Let's keep moving. Oh, wow, look, we get an extra metal band as well. Cool. So you got a, a nice silicone band, quick release, and a metal wraparound type band, all in the same package. Awesome. Here's the little manual in Chinese and hopefully in English halfway through. Starting right here, smartwatch, it says. Wow, those are big digits on there for showing you your temperature. Oh, they got fancy with their font. Look at that, almost not readable. Uh, here's the fine print. And again, for those of you new to the channel, I always try to go through the manual and get it close enough that you can freeze frame it on your YouTube and read it if you need to. There's our tethering app um, that you can either scan the QR code directly here or you can use the link in the show notes to go over and download the app from the Google Play Store and install it on your phone. It's through your phone that you'll tether to that app uh, over Bluetooth with Bluetooth turned on both the watch and your phone and uh, that'll get you your connection. So all the sensor readings that you take with your, um, and we're into another language here, with your watch will be transferable then uh, to the app. Let's get it all assembled. Well, here it is on and it comes up fast. I've already turned it on. Uh, no need to show you that when it's off. You just press and hold the screen and it'll light up for you. But I've wanted to have it on for quite a while now to let it stabilize to my body temperature, which it's giving me is 97.9. You see the icon up there of a person with a thing to their forehead. Now it's not using infrared like this is. It's actually using a little sensor dot on the bottom right there next to the heart rate stuff. Charger, 
removable bands. We talked all about that, but I want to keep it on so I can keep that temperature up to show you another aspect of this watch. This is actually a watch face, one of the few watch faces that come with it. And I'm not sure that you can install additional ones. I don't think so. There, we're adjusted. Okay, so you've got the time. It says body temperature down here. If, however, I press and hold... Oh, uh, no, can't do it that way. That gives us the version. Um, well, let's, we'll get to it when we get to it. How's that? I'm going to show you that when we take this one and we scroll to the left, you're getting last night's sleep time if you wore it to bed. One more, you're getting your step count, distance traveled, and calories for the day. One more, and you're getting a simple training thing that when you activate this will give you your average heart rate and calories and uh, elapsed time. And then you're back to the actual watch face. So one, two, three additional panels in, 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 with this one. Now, down and up goes the same way. If I go up, I'm going to loop through one two, three pages of stuff, and then back here. Or I can go backwards, which leads me to settings, which takes me here, where I could mute this so it's not going to vibrate. I can change the overall brightness level. Hello? Brightness? Oh, okay, it's just doing it on the fly. You see that? There's full brightness, and there's the lowest. So let's make it a little brighter for the video. And this is what I'm getting at, switch styles. I want to change from that one to ambient temperature. You notice it's in Fahrenheit. It normally boots up in centigrade, but when you connect it to the app and you set the app for uh, Fahrenheit, it will switch. Shows you water drops. And it says ambient temperature, and guys, that's not really the ambient temperature as you would measure if you walked into the room with a thermometer. This is somehow deriving it from being close to your skin, but estimating what the environment is around you. And uh, even leaving it on a table overnight, which is why I don't have any sleep time. I forgot to put it on. Sorry. Um, but it sat on the table in 70, roughly 70 degrees, and it was at 85. When I put it on, it's heated up to 89.6, and um, that's obviously lower than my body temperature. However, it's not true ambient outdoor temperature. So I don't know really what you're getting there. In terms of other faces, you just have some regular stuff with no temperature on it plain stuff with nothing on it and then we're back here to our body temperature which is where I'm going to leave it because that's the stake to claim of this watch. It seems to be pretty accurate but at the end we'll do a, a real test with it. So let's go through those apps. When I go up I can get into heart rate testing. I can click to measure and it'll go into a, uh, a testing mode obviously. It's using the green diodes for everything, doesn't have the red ones, and as it tests this it will record it on the watch and then you'll be able to transfer it to the uh, WearFit 2.0 app. And there you go. And it'll continue and eventually settle down and, and stop. Blood pressure is similar and that it's going to give you a reading there. Blood oxygen is similar, and that it'll give you a reading. And now those three basic core things come to you from green diodes on the watch, and then you've got this new thing, immunity. This is a kind of a percentage, and it's based on an algorithm, and it's showing up in several different watches, and I presume it's the same algorithm, and... Yeah, the jury's out on that one. In fact, they haven't even had the trial for the jury to weigh in on. It's something new. Uh, check the information that comes in the app about what immunity is and what the categories are and what the meaning is if you get a reading. It takes a long time. It's a one to two minute test. We'll look at that in the app. Here's that training thing where you can do walking, running, and cycling, skipping, badminton, basketball. There's no GPS on any of this. Swimming as well, so that means it must be waterproof. Um, you basically just get time and uh, step count and that kind of stuff. Messages, if you have yourself tethered and there's any pushed from the phone, show up here. Notice you got to go way into the app drawer to get to your messages. There's no scrolling up, down, left, or right to get to it easily. Sometimes it comes up, sometimes it doesn't. Weather, um, 
doesn't really work well. It's not supported by the app, and therefore you're not seeing it in the watch. So there's a little disconnect on uh, the weather, although it shows here. You've got a player that would play music that's on your watch if you're tethered to do that. You've got a basic timer that uh, resets itself if you leave the time. You can pause it. You can do this. You can reset it there. And of course, if you leave it and you come back into it, it resets to zero. And the rest of the settings, including that mute we told you about, the switching style, um, resetting and power off. Very simple watch. You basically have um, heart rate, blood pressure, and blood oxygen and immunity to cover all of the biometric stuff, as well as on this one, you have temperature. So let's look at the integration of that into the app, which is really more where the magic happens. We've reviewed Wear Fit 2.0 many, many times, so I'm not going to belabor it, but I do want to show you that when you're in and you're connected, and every watch connects with a different set of squares. This one, because we do have immunity and body temperature, those are showing up here. In addition, fatigue is part of the app that's not part of the watch, but it's covered. What am I talking about? Well, let's go into measure. When I get into here, one single measurement will let you automatically, using the green diode, calculate the heart rate, the blood pressure, the blood oxygen, and the fatigue level. I touched the blood oxygen or got too close to it. So you can see it's doing a continuous every hour measurement. I could do a single testing or real-time measurement will leave the uh, app constantly running showing you that and this might be the right one to do that on it'll do it on the other ones blood oxygen of course is what we're concerned about when it comes to COVID-19 and uh, ability to breathe and whether or not you have an emergency situation we've all learned that so far um, till that whole thing goes away and we've all got herd immunity we're still concerned about that and uh, when it gets down to what I've heard about 88 or so that's when things start to get critical and you need some help so it's in the process now of doing its analysis of blood oxygen to get the baseline uh, information at 94% with me rhythmically breathing and not inhaling long enough, it took that measurement and it's starting over again. So it's going to sit here and go over and over and over and live update on what it's giving as the current blood oxygen reading. By Bluetooth, with somebody wearing this watch and not even know what's happening in the background. So... This is one to consider if you have somebody convalescing, isolated in a room, trying to work with making sure they get through uh, whatever it is that's ailing them, healthy, uh, but still being able to be monitored by a loved one. And it gets to the top and it starts circling again. Now, it's not recording any of these, but it's showing it to you live right there. This is the regular hourly recording that you can refer to for reference. Okay, I gotta close that. I could do a single testing, which probably would be recorded. Same thing happens for all the others. Here's uh, accumulating, uh, accumulated heart rate readings, which seem reasonable. Look, when it gets down low, it's giving you a warning slightly lower, and I imagine it would do for high heart rate as well. Blood pressure. Most challenging of all is to get an accurate blood pressure with these devices, and you can see it's all over the place. I really wouldn't trust these for blood pressure. Use the cuff. If anything, use an abnormal reading or even a normal one as a trigger that you might want to get a more of a professional reading with a cuff or a trained professional. And finally, the fatigue. Man, look at that. I'm all over the place. 30, 35, 17. Yesterday was a lot better. 43, I don't know. That might have been when I didn't have it on. Yeah, this is late at night, right up till midnight. Remember, I forgot to wear it and left it on the table. So it's giving me, <laughs> I hope low is best. I, it's giving me a 43. And the other times when I was wearing it, down 10 and so forth, I can do a single testing here. It's a 20-second test, so let's just check it out. Nothing changes on the watch. In fact, 
You can't do fatigue testing on the watch. There. You got to, you know, usually it comes up right away, but if it's kind of out of sync of not knowing which way is up, it um, gets confused. So there we go. Yeah, look, lower is better. I'm at 22 uh, for fatigue, which can only be measured from the app um, in this area. But when you get back here to these squares beyond fatigue, you got your weekly report, and then you got that immunity value. And this is a continuous reading. It's showing me in the neighborhood of 60 to 80. I'm at 73, a one-click measurement. Here's the gauge. 73 is high, uh, 60 to 85. Normal is 35 to 60, so I'm high immunity. In this case, higher is better. 95 would be a great uh, strong immunity. How they're deriving this, what it's based on, is magic. I have no stake in knowing whether or not you could believe these numbers. So use it for entertainment, folks, really. Just entertainment, like playing a computer game. And finally, we got our body temperature. I love this pulsing icon. That's pretty cool. We're at 97.5 on my arm as we speak. And... Um, it looks like 97.9 to 95 on the low with an average of 95.5. There's the numbers from when I really got started this morning. Here's yesterday. Uh, played with it, took it off, played with it some more. So it realistically is measuring something. It's not giving you fake data. It's saying I'm at 97.5 currently, and that's what it's actually showing. And... Wow, did you see it just flip to 99.9? That was interesting. Okay, now it's saying 97.7. Let me get a calibrated thermometer thing, and let's check right here on my arm to see how close this is to reality. So I went over to CVS, and I spent my hard-earned money and 30% discount to get this nice calibrated uh, high-end um infrared thermometer designed for measuring things, people, and the ambient environment. That's all in here. It's got a backlight. There we go. You see the picture of a person. It's set up to do a body reading. This is live and still going. So I'm going to come right up here, get an inch or two away, hit the button. 95.0. That's what the watch is saying. How about down here? 94.8. How about on the inside of my arm? Error 1. Okay, let's try it again right here. Ah, what's going on? Try it right here. 96. So you say, Mr. Tix, it's reading low. This is higher by a degree and a half. Well, look at this. It's constrained. The sensor is buried underneath the watch, which itself may have a little bit of heat generation going on, but it would be more like I'm wearing a sweater or something. So I would probably need to measure this with cloth over here because the ambient temperature outside is cooler than uh, my skin temperature. Therefore, my skin is probably cooling down. I'm going to point it at my forehead right now, press the button, and... 98.9 up on my forehead. Are you seeing that? I hope so. There you go, 98.9. Interesting, huh? Um, how about right here on my hand? 96.2. And I'm sitting 97.9. I can't validate that it's right or wrong to the tenth of a degree, but I get a gut feel that it makes logical sense it could be right. How about ambient? Let's uh, change this mode, turn the light on. That's just plain amb ambient. That's measuring an object, and that's measuring a person. So I'm going to switch to ambient and just point it at the sky. And 75.0, that sounds right. That looks uh, matches the thermometers that I've got around here. And I can't see it on here by itself, but again, if I come here to settings, change the style to ambient, and select it, ambient temperature 90.3, 75. 
way off, way, way off. And 93, obviously, is way lower than what it's giving me for my body temperature, which is still measuring the body temperature, even though I changed the watch face to ambient. So don't believe the ambient. Be questionable about the blood pressure. Heart rate probably is realistic. Um, and temperature, yeah. I think it, uh, you know, until you get 104 degrees or something, 100.4, I really can't tell you if it's going to measure high uh, temperature that would be of concern. But in a standard skin measuring model, it seems to be pretty close to right. Okay, all right, that that makes sense. I love it, you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm so reading your comments before you even send them. Um, I know, you got all day, so do I. Let's switch back here to the body temperature. Oh, you know what? This is showing body temperature. Uh-oh, it stopped. Wait a minute. What's going on? <gasps> I took it off, and it's not Wow. I thought it would just start reading ambient temperature. I've got some stuff on me there. But it's not. It's not reading anything. i got to put it back. Wow. Well, that's interesting. All right. Draw your own conclusions. It's doing body temperature, but you know what? Okay. I'm. <laughs> you still with me? I'm going to put it on my forehead. There. I've got it on my forehead. We're going to give it a second. While we're doing that, I'm going to use my other hand because I know you want to move on in life and tell you that you can get this from Banggood. It's called the GTR-H Real-Time Body Ambient Temperature Thing. Uh, looks like an Apple Watch, lightweight, removable bands. You've seen it all. Check the show notes. Should have a coupon discount for you there. And strap it on wherever you like, as you can from the app, do a real-time measurement. 97.9. That's the same as I got on my arm. I would have thought it would be higher, because that got me 98 point something. Now I dropped to 97. Three. Wow. Well, you just got to get it and play with it. For the 30 35 bucks it's it's fun as a toy just to check it out see what you get pass it around the dinner table and let your family play with it anyway you get really big digits centigrade or fahrenheit um yeah i like it i don't swear by it but i think it'd be a fun little thing to play with all right gang we'll see you again soon